Good evening and welcome to I'm Listening, Stay Connected. I'm Listening is a 24-7, 365 initiative that works to destigmatize mental health. And May is Mental Health Awareness Month, so it's really important that we're continuing to talk about our mental health so that we are comfortable discussing it with others, sharing about it, hearing others share their mental health with us, and also just get familiar sitting with our feelings. Because again, feeling all of your feelings, sitting with all of them is how we really work on maintaining and improving our mental health. Now, my definition of mental health includes relational health. One of the most powerful ways you can check in on your mental health is by looking at the quality of all the different relationships you're in. And I mean that in terms of employers, loved ones, family members, sex partners, romance partners, all the different relationships. Because relationships hold up a mirror. They show us where our work is. And that's now what a beautiful thing to be working on, looking at all the different relationships you have and saying to yourself, what kind of friend am I? What kind of partner, what kind of loved one? And what do I need to do to improve the way I operate and show up in other people's lives? Because again, we get into relationships of all different kinds to at least have our lives made neutral, but more so I want us to be better off for having been in people's lives and for having had them in ours. So check in on that. Are you making people's lives better or are you making them more difficult? And also just looking at our triggers. And that's what I love about being surrounded by so many relationships is when you are triggered, that's a sign that you have work to do. It shows you where your wound is. It shows you what you need to work on and get better about. So use this time to look at the quality of the relationships that you help create and also the ones that you're in and look at what the work is that needs to be done. We'll be talking more about that. But right now, let's go to Melanie Martin, actress and owner of HMM Spa. How are you? Welcome to the show. I'm great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I always like to start off by asking right now, how is your mental health? Um, great, actually. I think that like many of us, um, we have our good days and bad days, but it's about monitoring, you know, what's creating those feelings. And then, as you were just saying, doing the work for the triggers. So I think that's what this time is really all about. Yeah. And that's what I'm discussing with my clients. You know, we, we've seen those memes about people learning languages, getting second degrees. And I say to them, if nothing else, rest, but also do some, do some mental exercise along with a lot of that physical exercise. So what are the self-care uh, tools that you are tapping into right now? Well, I am definitely spoiling myself with physical activity. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've taken up running outside, which I've never been a great runner. So I'm giving that a go. Um, working out every day, doing a lot of meditation and doing a lot of inner work, reading, um, studying some of the gurus that I work with and um, using the opportunity to enhance myself, build my immunity and be a better version of myself. Wow. That's one of the most solid and comprehensive answers we've gotten yet on the show. Well done. Where does, where does all that motivation and focus come from for you? Um, <sighs> probably adversity, if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, my growth, really. I'm, I'm willing to face myself and I'm up for the challenge. So I, I'm, flesh I, I'm actually blushing right now. <laughs> no, thank you for being so vulnerable. I think adversity is such a powerful teacher. It can show us our strength, it can show us where our weaknesses are as to let us to know where, where maybe we need some improving or, or where the work is. So I'm glad to hear that you, that you take advantage of that like that. Thank you. Yeah. And that's what I want, you know, a lot of this time to be used for. So looking at your own journey, you've been on a research journey. It says um, over 10 years looking at different modalities in relationship to cancer. Talk to us about that. Uh, well, speaking of adversity, I lost my mom 12 years ago to brain cancer, and in that loss, I gained a passion to help others going through the same thing, and I'm very passionate about it. Um, I've been able to work with and learn from some of the brightest minds in the world, and I'm really excited to complete this documentary so that I can create a platform that will service anyone who's sick or, you know, loved ones who are looking for answers um, on one platform that will have all of the different treatment modalities, including what's available in Western medicine. But um, there isn't anywhere in the world that there is a platform that has all of the information of all the different treatments. So I want to make it like a one-stop shop for patients because they don't usually have a lot of time. So I want to just try and make it easy for them. Yeah, I think that's really beautiful. I, I know that Western medicine can have a place in some people's healing, but I'm also a yeah. big fan of honoring that there's a lot of alternative methods that we're not always the most familiar with that can bring us peace, um, 
some decreasing of symptoms and some healing. So you, you found them. Yes. I've found many <laughs> and I haven't found them. I've just become aware of them. They've already been in existence. Right. Um, so yeah, there's, I think there's up to almost 40 different modalities that I have become aware of. Beautiful. Far. And that's kind of what came out of even this pandemic right now is people looking at how, you know, mental health, if we're centering that in our discussion right now, that looking at the way they're moving or not moving their bodies, the, the foods that they're putting into their bodies, um, their exposure just to things like daylight and fresh air, how all of that comes together to create a foundation for us to be at our best mentally and emotionally. Yeah, I was just actually speaking with um, a client earlier and we were talking about you know, raising your frequency when, when we're in a high vibe, and I know that sounds like a very trendy LA way to say it, but when our frequency is, is high, we feel our best. So it's about doing things that are going to raise our frequency, whether it's the foods that we eat, the water that we drink, the air that we breathe, the sunshine, all these things, and, and moving the body from, which, you know, eliminating stagnant energy and stuff like that. So yeah, absolutely. It's all about raising your frequency and whatever raises your vibe and makes you feel good is what you should be doing. Yeah. And finding those, finding those benchmarks. I know that in my own life, there's certain specific things that I know I need to always be checking in on because if they're actively in my life, I'll be doing my best and they're a good sign when my life is a little off kilter. And so it's kind of like my little barometer. And so I'm advocating for people to try to find those. Is there a certain level of nutrition or movement or meditation or mental exercise, whatever it's going to be like, use this time to find those benchmarks. So well spoken. That's very eloquently said. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I think that's really what this opportunity is about. Um, everyone is is being faced with something that's uncomfortable for them right now. Whether it's financial, whether it's um, being alone, whatever it is, but that is coming up for us to heal at a deeper level, and we will ascend, and our frequency will be higher, and we will be healthier for it if we do the work. Yeah. Do the work. It's hard to get that motivation, but I, I, I'm such a I'm such a fan of that. Um, talk to me a little bit about you. Have, well, first off, congratulations. You have three films that are coming out this year. I mean, that's that's quite a feat. So congratulations on that. Yeah. And I wanted to get a little more clarification on the one because this is an interesting concept that I've never heard of. Try life. And it's an interactive web series allowing youth to try life without consequences of real life. Yeah, it's. It's brilliant, really. Um, it's been around for a few years. They're, I think this was their, don't quote me on this, but maybe their fifth episode. And an episode, um, like a normal script is about 100, 120 pages. Their episode's like 900 pages. Because what we do is we shoot, you know, four or five lead characters, and the viewer gets to choose what happens next. So does the girl go to the party? Yes or no? And then it's a series of events that follow from each decision that is made. And it allows, you know, the youth to really see what happens when they make these choices without being negatively affected in real life. Wow. That's, yeah. that's quite extensive. I know when I was a kid, we had these little flimsy book called Choose Your Own Adventures. And it was literally just a chapter or two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is like quite a technological advancement from those days. Wow. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah, it's the uh, filmmaker is Paul Irwin and his wife, Nikki Carr, and they're based out of um, Northern England. So I got to go shoot in England uh, to shoot that. It was great. Very cool. And then uh, Reboot Camp is a mock you, doc you, uh, and then uh, Bad President. Look, I'm on board for the Bad President. We're ready for that one. <laughs> Well done. Comedy <laughs> satire it should be very entertaining. <laughs> I cannot wait to see that. Um, well, congratulations on all you're doing. You're a very busy person. So, you know, you kind of spoke about meditation and raising your vibration. Is that what you do to keep your energy levels um, up and focused while doing all the different work you're doing? You also run the HMM spa. I mean, that's pretty diversified. Well, let's remember we're in quarantine right now. <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> So my schedule is pretty free, okay. um, but yeah, I know I do have my spa business. Um, I have, I'm honored to have an amazing team of beauty and wellness experts that have worked with me for gosh, almost a decade. And so that business is pretty self-sufficient. You know, clientele will reach out, they need this and that, and I just direct and make it happen. So that's not very time consuming for me. I'm very lucky with the, the model that, that that is, it's pretty effective. Um, and then the filming, obviously I'm filming when I'm filming and when I'm not, 
it allows me to continue work on my passion project the cure this documentary um and then i also work one-on-one -on -one with some clients a handful of clients um to help them raise their frequency all right we had some questions that came in that i'd love for you to answer with us sure this first one asks, my life is harmful to my mental health and I want to change industries, but I'm nervous because I've never worked in another industry. What advice do you have as someone who has branched out yourself? Wow, what a beautiful question. Um, so their work life is harmful to their mental health. Well, your mental health is number one. If you're not feeling well inside your own head, then you must make changes. And life is scary, but the biggest lesson that I've learned is every time I'm really scared, something amazing happens right after. As long as I step through that door of fear, um, you never know what's on the other side and the universe will reward you for being brave and uh, having integrity for your own well-being. Um, I believe the universe conspires to help us when we know what we want and what we deserve. So um, there's so much out there, like try things, do some service work and see what resonates with you. and. I'm sure you'll find a lot of things that make you feel good. And All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Lost our feed, but here we are. Oh, I'm listening. Stay connected. We are here. We are listening. If you want to join the conversation, you can do so by sending your questions to our Loveline DMs or by tweeting them at the hashtag I'm listening. And we'll be answering those questions throughout the show and also throughout the week. So please send in all of your questions related to mental health and, of course, anything happening right now with the pandemic. Uh, I have some questions that came in that I'm going to answer. This one asks, how do I get better? about being realistic with my expectations of things during this difficult time. Tired of feeling disappointed because I expect too much out of people and situations. Oh, I totally understand that. <laughs> people are always gonna let us down, not just now, but for the rest of our lives. And so it's about holding space to let people do better. Also understanding that people are in the context of their own lives. We never know what they might be going through or struggling with. So again, we wanna have what we call a little bit of grace. Uh, not that people repeatedly harm us, we wanna hold people accountable, but we do wanna hold things a little loose. People are hyper stressed, hyper tired. Some people are struggling financially or with their health or even the passing or struggle of loved ones. So we wanna give people a little bit of a break, let them know that maybe they've harmed you and hold space for them to uh, repair. But as far as, 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 excuse me, expectations, drop the bar a little bit. We want to be going easier on ourselves and expectation on others right now. It's a tough time. All right, got another question. And this one asks, I'm struggling with setting time aside for myself and I feel the mental exhaustion of building up. How can I do it with three kids and work? Ooh, you're going to be need to practice some boundaries. I don't know what kind of home or apartment you live in, but sometimes it's about physically moving yourself, changing rooms, closing doors, putting signs up saying that you're working or taking time away or letting everyone know when I go in this room or I close the door, I am quote unquote at work or I'm taking a break. I also have some patients in my practice that are going for drives or walks to get time to themselves. And uh, they kind of benchmark it. They maybe start their day that way or end their day that way or do it midday. It's all about self-care. So make sure you're building it in because that, that's, again, what's going to really help you with your mental health and help you get through the stress of this. But right now, let's go to Dr. Elaine Aaron, psychologist and author of The Highly Sensitive Parent. How are you? Welcome to the show. Just fine. I'm good to see you. Good to see you. How are you well. doing? I'm hanging in there. <laughs> Stressful times, interesting times, but I'm thriving. I'm doing all right. Yeah, I think, I think maybe... Those of us in this area 
ending up working harder than others at this time. It's not sitting around not knowing what to do with our time, huh? That's right. People are talking about downtime, and I'm saying to them, what downtime are you speaking about? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so let's jump right in. Let's talk about pandemic stresses on parents. Good, good issue. And uh, I actually was hearing some of your comments, and they're, they're certainly true. Children at home, even if they've got schooling, it's a whole different story. And I think in the long run, families are going to look back and think it was quite a precious time off. And I see people out walking with their children, and I know they don't usually do this at one o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday. You know, um, But right now, it's awesome. And I think one of the things people don't think about enough is how it's probably affecting the children. Even little children know something very odd is going on when, when children are pulled away from other people and told, oh, don't go near them. What does that mean to a child? So we're seeing, I think, a lot more emotional upset in children, which is very hard on parents. The task is, as you were saying, to take boundaries, to, to take downtime. You know, 80% of our stimulation comes in through our eyes, so if we can just get our eyes closed, it, uh, even for a few moments, it helps a lot. A few minutes of meditation, whatever you can do outdoors, I think is enormously important if you can get out, especially if you have anything green with trees that you can get to. I, I also I, say it. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, I, I love your entry point just about the fact that although children are adaptable, they are still open systems and sponges and they're aware of what's happening and internalizing this. Right. And it's going to be very strange to have lived through this because it's it's going to go on for a while, clearly, in, in different ways. School's going to look different in the fall when they go back to school. So I think it helps us as humans, as parents, and as children to step back to remember the past and the future. I, I heard one doctor being interviewed all about the virus, but he started talking about his childhood and how he became a doctor in this very poor town, and he went around... Um, with a contract telling everybody, um, every business owner, if you will give me some money to go to college, I will come back here and be your doctor. Wow. Well, I mean, it's a wonderful story to hear in the midst of all this, that there was really more to life than, than, than his having to talk about this, this virus. And I think it's hard to envision the future, but we know certain hallmarks that are going to happen. We're going to continue to go to school. The kids will continue to go to school. They'll go to college. It's, I think when we step back, we calm down. And, and when we calm down, we step back. And I like what you're saying earlier, just about the behavioral aspects in terms of coping, closing your eyes. And a lot of people don't consider or think about that, that sometimes we don't have to move our body from the situation as much as we can close our eyes, as you said, to decrease the stimulation. Right. And when children are being noisy, you can always put in earplugs, you'll still hear them, but it can reduce the stimulation. You know, I wrote this book about highly sensitive parents, and they're 20% of the population, they are more sensitive than other people. But I often joke that for that what's good for sensitive people is very often good for everyone. We just don't, not everyone realizes it right away that secondhand smoke's not working or all this noise is distressing. So, uh, Sensitive parents are, I don't like to say canary in the coal mine until I found out that the canaries are brought up from the bottom of the coal mine before they die because they're too expensive to lose. Oh, wow. <laughs> but uh, sensitive people definitely are, it's hard to make comments, generalizations about everyone, isn't it? I love, someone said something, oh, we're all in the same boat. And then someone else said, oh, no, we're all in the same storm but we're all in very different boats. And a mother with three children and having to work at the same time, very different boat from two retired people with good incomes and um, not much change except they work from home now. Or they always work from home. No, thank you for saying that. I think that that's helpful for people not feeling shame that they're not keeping up with what they're seeing everyone else doing on social media. Because some of what my clients are saying in my practice is they're seeing people baking bread and doing all yes. sorts of extravagant things. They're saying, I am struggling to pay rent and have three kids. I can't have the same bar as high as theirs. Right. And not judging is probably one of the biggest things right now. And to remember that your, your boat is just completely your own. And this is going to bring up, for some people, it'll bring up past traumas and others, it'll bring up strengths that they never knew they had. And of course, all those combinations of things. 
it's it's such an unusual time and we're we're learning as we go along too about how human beings deal with such a thing although i have a jungian background and i think it's interesting to think about plague as an archetype that's been with human beings for a long time it's not one we think about very much because it's unpleasant but um, we do have social distancing way back to the 500s when the first plague was recorded in history so um, the important thing with an archetype is not to identify with it. Like you don't want to identify with being the hero and you don't want to be the good mother all the time. You don't want to be um, someone stuck in a plague all the time. You want to have an identity outside of that. And that includes I'm not these people that I see who are coping with it in this way. I cope with it my own way. Mm, and, I love and that. There's so much, of course, there's so much creative stuff going on that we see. And then we think, well, I'm not doing anything creative. And I encourage people to have a bit of a schedule and have something to look forward to. My husband and I make a big point of having something to look forward to. We've, we've um, ordered um, some more expensive wine than we would usually drink from our favorite <laughs> winery. Oh, I <laughs> because, love that. <laughs> we're not going out to dinner, you know. With the, all the money we're saving, just a glass of that wine. <laughs> wow, <laughs> fancy, fancy couple. I'm into that. I'm into that. Yeah. I mean, but I like the idea of having something to look forward to because for some people, time creep and boredom and the day is just endless. There's nothing, there's no joy. And so I like that, just planning ahead, thinking ahead. Um, we had some questions that came in that I'd love for you to answer with us. Sure. Uh, this first one asks, what valuable learning moment or moments can kids come out of this pandemic with? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something really funny. And I don't know how people are going to take this. But I've been talking about the pandemic, about the virus. A little virus evolved. And a little lesson about evolution. It wants to survive, just like we do. We just have to get it to not use us to survive. It can go and survive with something else, but not us. <laughs> I mean... If we step back and we look, it's not its not this horrible thing exactly. It's just a creature trying to survive just like the mosquitoes are and the elephants are. And, and that might be a little bit calming for, for some children. Again, it's stepping back. I don't know if that means anything or sounds a little silly. No, I think it's I, I, I think it's very sweet. I think there's a children's book in there for you to write <laughs> about the little <laughs> <Maybe>. virus. <laughs> about the little virus <laughs> named Vivian. <laughs> it's always going to have a sweet little girl's name. Uh, we have another question I'd love for you to answer with us. This one asks, I worry a lot about my kids' safety, and I want to let them enjoy themselves when this is all over, but I have concerns about the virus still lingering around. How do I find balance between letting them have fun while also protecting them? Well, this is what parents are always having to do, but this is just a new case that has a kind of a deadly edge to it. Thank goodness children are not, uh, seem to be, don't, aren't as affected as older people by it. It depends on the age of the child. You don't want to put too much responsibility on the child to take care of themselves, but you want to give them some sense of freedom and choice as they get older and being uh, understanding what, what the risks are. But of course, you can't do that with young children. I think we're all going to be faced with some horribly difficult decisions of exactly that type. Like, okay, they let me go out more now, but it's still a risk. It's, I'm part of a public health experiment to see what happens. And your children are too. So I suppose if it were me, I would be on the conservative side. You know, highly sensitive people tend to be very, um, not afraid, but alert to situations, um, process them very carefully. And I think they'll... <laughs> You know, this is, I think they're going to do very well through this because they're going to be careful. And I think their children will too, because I think carefulness can be kind of hidden. You don't mm. have to, it's the way we talk about it more than the, than the way we behave. Like if you just plan, just as when you plan with a little child to avoid tantrums and by being sure that they're fed and, and they have everything they need and are rested, then there's fewer tantrums. Maybe protecting them, too, doesn't have to be very explicit if we um, arrange the environment in the right way and just don't plan on things that we know won't be safe. Ah, the joys of parenting. <laughs> it's oh, the complexity. 
Are you a dad? Uh, not not yet. Not yet. I, I, I'm, no. I'm in no rush. It's going to happen, though. Just not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Elaine yeah. Aaron, author of The Highly Sensitive Parent, thank you so much for being a part of the show. Oh, it was a pleasure. It was Have a, pleasure, a beautiful Chris. night. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. And there it is. You got to take time apart. You got to check in with all your different identities. I, I love that message. The bar is not going to be the same for you as it is for everyone else. We have to just be very thoughtful and honest about what we need based on all the different responsibilities in our lives. We're not all in the same place. And so the expectations have to be different. So don't let yourself feel bad about not necessarily keeping up with what everyone else is accomplishing or doing on social media. That bread, though, every time I see people baking the bread, the bar's high. Uh, if you want to send us some questions, you can be a part of the show by doing so by tweeting at hashtag I'm listening. We can send your questions into our DMs on the Loveline IG page. We'll be answering those throughout the week. I have a question that came in, and this one asks, spending a lot of time with my partner as we're quarantining together, and I'm seeing parts of them I didn't notice before, and it's caused some issues. How seriously do I need to take this since anyone is bound to get on each other's nerves spending all their time together? It's a really beautiful question, and I'm hearing this asked in a lot of different ways. Yes, definitely there's an amplification of some of the more subtle issues that now feel a lot bigger. So I'm telling people, take things lighter. Let things go a little bit. We want to take them seriously in that everything does matter. How we treat each other will impact us beyond you know, the boundaries opening up. And so those wounds still will remain. So try to be loving and caring, take time apart, but hold it still a little bit loosely, knowing that we're going to get a little more frustrated than we might have. We don't have all of our coping mechanisms and all the different things that are natural boundaries and buffers in place. So hang in there with each other, but uh, take some time apart. That's the preventative piece, but um, more care and compassion, y'all, between the two of you, I'm telling you. All right, we got one final question that came in and this one asks, I've been working on my mental health for years and I was wondering what are the qualities of good mental health? How do I know that it's improving? Oh, that's a big question. Um, look at the health of the relationships you are surrounded in. Talked about that at the beginning of the show. That's a really good way to reflect back how well we're doing, those that are around us and their health. Also, just acceptance, accepting and celebrating who you are, all your different parts, and also working on feeling all your feelings. As we said, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, and here at I'm Listening, Stay Connected, we want you to feel all of your feelings. They're not good, bad, right, or wrong. We need to feel all them to get out of this. Uh, coming up on our next show, we've got singer Allie Brooke, and you know her from Fifth Harmony and Dancing with the Stars. So if you have questions for her, you could do so by tweeting hashtag I'm listening. We'll be back with Allie Brooke tomorrow night at 5 p.m. Pacific. That's 8 p.m. Eastern. Check out all of our past shows on all the radio.com handles. And as always, thanks for hanging out with me. And you all have an awesome, awesome night. <laughs>